Okay, well, to get a common denominator, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by this bottom, which is x minus z, and top and bottom of here by this bottom, which is x plus z. So I'd see x minus z all divided by x plus z x minus, oops, x minus z. That's an x there. And then I add to it, uh, when I get a common denominator here, I multiply top and bottom by x plus z, so I'd have x plus z over the same bottom. That's a good way of doing that, so I won't avoid making the same typo again. All right, so what does that equal? Well, now I have the same bottom, so I can actually combine the tops. x plus x is 2x. And I have a minus z plus z. Actually, they add to give 0. So in fact, I've got 0. And on the bottom, I just have all that good stuff there. And let's make sure we record it correctly here. So that's going to be x plus z times x minus z. So there's the answer. Now, if you actually do feel compelled to multiply the bottom out, it does have an attractive bottom. So let me just show you the, oops, sorry, I hope that wasn't, OK, I didn't mean that. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, if you multiply out the, the bottom, you just see a difference of two perfect squares. And as an attractive of a bottom this is, I still think this is the way I would like to see the answer for me. Anyway, both those are, are correct, and that's how you add those two fractions. Let's try one last one. Let me try to really sort of stick it to you here. 1 over t squared plus t minus 12 minus 1 over t squared minus 7t plus 12. You think that's enough? Think that's enough? Nah. Let's add on 1 over t squared minus 16. There you go. There you go. Give that a try. Um, and see if you can find the least common multiple and how you have to get everything to have the common bottom. See if you can combine subtracting and then adding. Give it a shot. It's going to take a little bit, but it's really worth trying, and then I'll do it for you and you can see how it goes. But give it a shot first.